learning about, and we're going to continue learning about, the tabernacle. Have any of you been in any of the tabernacle lessons? No. Okay. We'll do a little review. I'll show you. Pretend this is... Oh, you forgot the bottom? <laughs> no. Uh-uh. This, this isn't water. Pretend this is ground. Because I forgot to put the ground on there. Okay. And way back in the Old Testament Bible, before Jesus was born, you know that the Bible has two parts? There's before Jesus was born and after Jesus was born. Before Jesus was born, that's called the Old Testament. And then after, that's Ooh, called the New Testament. Really? Well, back in the Old Testament, the Hebrew children worshipped in this big tent. Wow. Which is a boat, right? It's a tent. Oh. Boat. <laughs> <laughs> what about this? The tent is like on a boat. A barge? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that now because I forgot to put the ground on I know, it. it's a floating boat. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a tent boat. Okay. The house boat. Now, God told Moses to build this tabernacle. He called it a tabernacle, it's also called the tent. The oh. tent. It's called the tent of meeting. A place to meet. It's like our pavilion is a place to meet. Uh, it means that this, this is a tabernacle. Yes, this is a tabernacle. So we learn about the tabernacle and a tabernacle. Now, the people that we're going to meet in this building is very, very special to God. He said, I want you to build a tabernacle so that I can meet with you. So God wants to be with people. And so he, he, he made a special place, this tabernacle, to be with them. And this is the holy place. This is a big fence around the outside. It's made of pure white linen. Then there's only one door to get in. What does that remind you of? Ooh. A party time? No. Only one door to get in. The ark only had one door. The ark only had one the door. The ark only had one door. And who said, I am the door and I am the way? Jesus. Jesus. So this reminds us of Jesus. Only one way in. But the curtains are getting wet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, and then this is called the courtyard because you're not there in the holy place yet. God's in here. Oh, he's inside there. But first you have to do a couple things. You have to do something at this altar, and you have to do something at this, what they call labor for the water. But we'll get to that later. And if after you stop here and do what you have to do here, and stop here and do what you have to do here, then... The high priest can go in here where God is. Wow. He's inside this tent called the holy place. Wow. And we're going to learn about a little bit more about this holy place. Wow. Now just a little bit of review of what we've done so far. Oh, I have to see this. One thing we need to always remember is that God always longs to be with you. That's right. To be with you. To be with us. That is all God ever cares about and all he ever thinks about. Wow. Is being with you. He just wants to be with you. We don't always think about being with him. We think about doing other things. But all he ever thinks about and all he ever wants is to be with you. Because he's our friend. Because he's our friend. And the whole Bible is about how... Man sinned, Adam sinned, and because of his sin, he couldn't be with God anymore. And so God made a special way to get back together with us. Cool. Because we sinned, he said, I know how I'm going to get back together uh -huh. with men. I'm going to die for their sins. Wow. And then their sins will be paid for, and I can be with them again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, he made this tabernacle, this tent, the tabernacle, but this tent 
was like a great big picture of Jesus. Wow. Long before Jesus was ever even born. Mm. And every single thing in this tabernacle points to Jesus. Wow. Remember we said the door was like Jesus? How was the door like Jesus? Run. One way. One way in to heaven, and that's through Jesus. Just like there's only one way in to this tabernacle, and that's through this one door. We're going to see how this um, brazen altar is like Jesus. Mm. We're going to see how this laver full of water, like a big cup, we're going to see how it is like Jesus. And we're going to see how this fence is like Jesus. Wow. And we're going to see, <laughs> and we're going to see how everyone, everything on top of this tent is like Jesus and everything inside. We're going to go inside this tent. You can't go inside yet. Woo! <laughs> But everything inside is like Jesus. So long before Jesus was born, God wanted to give man a hint what Jesus was going to be like. Wow. So everything here is like Jesus, and the only place we can meet with God is in Jesus Christ. Wow. And the only place these people could meet with God is in this tabernacle. So that was in the Old Testament. Old Testament. And everything points to Jesus. Ooh, I saw something. Joyce, you used to be a smoker? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Started smoking when I was 10 years old. What? And I smoked until I was 16, and that's when I gave my heart to Jesus. And I quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And drinking. And, well, I didn't hardly drink. Anyway. <laughs> So let's look at this tent. The Hebrew tent uh, was not as wonderful as God's big tent, the heavens. The tabernacle, but it's pretty special, and the tabernacle was built using very expensive materials, such as gold, silver, bronze, and special expensive cloth. Wow. So this was no cheap tent like we throw up to go camping. This was made of gold and silver and bronze and expensive cloth, and it was worth millions of dollars. Wow. The gold in the tabernacle weighed over a ton. Wow. So there's a ton of gold in here. A ton of gold? Today it would cost more than a million. The gold structure itself underneath these cloth pieces, the gold structure was mostly wood covered with gold. Uh, it wasn't just wood, it was just all covered with gold. So it was very, very valuable, very expensive. So if you're walking along in the desert, this should be desert, not water. <laughs> if you're walking along in the desert and you see this tent, you may not realize it, but there's over a million dollars worth of gold and expensive oh. stuff Ooh. inside this tent. It's like a treasure hid inside a field. <laughs> okay. And now they put four coverings over this tent. Four. The first covering, which is the one closest to God, because God's inside the, inside the tent. Ah. And then another one. Is there going to be two? <laughs> and then another one. Wow. That's one, two, three. And then four. <laughs> so these are the four coverings. And we're going to look at those four coverings, but today we're just going to look at the first one. The first covering was the prettiest and priciest. It was the most expensive covering. What? It was made of expensive linen, embroidered. Who knows what embroidery is? Sewing with... When you sew designs into the cloth. Oh, I see. Embroidered by very skilled artists and held together with gold clasps. Perfect. Not just any clasps, gold. Wow. Real gold class. And several, several classes. Very, very fancy. So, 
God told Moses, make the tabernacle with ten curtains of good material, white, remember these colors, blue, purple, and red. Wow. Good. Tell a wise worker that he must make the picture of angels on the curtain. So he's going to embroider the angels. So this expensive Egyptian linen curtain is going to have red threads, white threads, purple threads, blue threads, and it's going to have pictures of angels. So a lot like heaven. <laughs> and if you look real close, all those colors would be in here. That's right. All right, now let's, look, let's, see it. let's talk about the white threads. Because didn't I say everything in the tabernacle is a picture of what? Jesus. No. Everything in the tabernacle is a picture of... Jesus. Jesus. So that means even the white threads, the white threads are a picture of Jesus? Wow. How is that so? Well, the white threads remind us of the sinlessness and purity of Jesus. Uh, white's for purity. Okay, so on this is a picture, a close-up of the covering. Do you see any white threads? Right. The angels are white. Yes. All right. And that reminds us of what? The purity of, purity of Jesus. Jesus. Did Jesus ever sin? No. Did it Jesus ever say a bad word? No. Did Jesus ever say no to his mother? No. No, he was a good boy. He, he was sinless. Okay. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, but there was no sin in him. That's right. Never once. Can you imagine having a brother that never did anything wrong? Then you would not be kind of... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now the red threads, okay? Look, red threads, okay? The red threads remind us of The yes. blood of Jesus. Yes, yeah, because right. everything reminds us of Jesus. Reminds us of the suffering Savior and his blood shed as a price. I see red. For our salvation. I see red. His blood is shed as a price for our salvation. All right. Yes. Wait, when we do a nature get to stay with all the cards. You gotta do your best, like always. <laughs> okay. So he suffered the things we should have suffered. What does that mean? That, uh, that what he suffered, and that we don't even care, that some of us didn't even care that what he suffered. Okay. Who sinned? Who sinned? We or Jesus? We, we did. We did. So we should have suffered for our sins. Mm -hmm. But who suffered for our sins instead? Jesus. All right. He took on himself the pain that should have been ours. He was crushed because we had done what was evil. Right. That's okay. like if your brother uh, does something bad and you get punished for it. No. That doesn't seem fair, does it? No, but Jesus did it on purpose. Jesus was punished for what we did. <laughs> and he didn't care. He wanted to. He was punished to make us whole again. He paid for you with his precious life blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Okay. Okay. Now the purple. All right. What is the purple? <laughs> purple was the color worn by kings mm. in those days. The soldiers used a purple robe to make fun of Jesus uh, for calling himself a king. Mm -hmm. So then they were crucifying Jesus. Come on up here, Harold. Oh, no, no, no. When they were crucifying Jesus, before they crucified him, they said, they, they made fun of him, they were mean to him. And they said, I oh, don't think you're a king. You call yourself a king. So they put this purple robe on him. Ha, 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 he 
thinks he's a king. And they put, they say, who's your crown, king? There was a crown of thorns. Oh. He stuck it in his hand. Okay. Soldiers put a purple robe on Jesus. Then they twisted thorns together to make a crown. They placed it on his head. Wow. After they had made fun of him, they took off the purple robe. They put on his own clothes back on him. And then they led him to nail him uh, to the cross. No. Oh no. Yeah. Okay, so they were saying, if you think you're a king, here's your purple robe. And they were laughing. But is, Je is, is Jesus a king? Yes. Yes, he is. Jesus is a king. In fact, he is the king of kings. That's right. Our mother. He's the king of every king. That's right. Even your mother. So, this is what the picture of him in heaven is. It says, on his robe. And on his leg is a name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. Now, I don't know, but John had this picture, this, this uh, disciple named John had this vision of Jesus in heaven. And he said, it was written on his robe, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And it was written on his leg. <laughs> King, so, of Kings and Lord King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That way, if he takes his robe off, it's still written on his leg. Wow. <laughs> King of Kings. Oh, Lord of Lords. So cool. <laughs> now the blue. Oh, pardon. One more. One more. I got one more color. I the blue. More. No, I think we're out of it's purple. purple. Yeah, the purple didn't show up. It was on here, but it didn't print well. Okay. The blue is the color of heaven. Heaven. Right, blue sky. Blue sky. Okay, so the Hebrew text was beautiful, but it was just a copy of God's tent in heaven. Did you know he had a tent in heaven? I do, I do now. He has a tent in heaven. Okay, Christ didn't enter a sacred tent made from people. That tent was only a copy of the one he entered in heaven itself. He did it to stand in front of God for us. He is there right now. So you see us down here? Wow. There's a little tent. The Hebrews have a tent down here. I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> but Jesus is in a tent in heaven. Oh, yeah. So the blue in the little tent down here is just to remind us of Jesus' real tent. Up in heaven. That's but cool. But in hell, <laughs> uh, the devil has a evil. Yeah, yeah, the, the devil doesn't have much. Okay, so next week we're going to look at the other three coverings. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Okay, so today we did this one. Oh, just the one. So what's this one? There's a white one. And what's this one? And a red one. And what's this one? The cheer print. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, all right. Who wants to come and do your name tag? I think we already We're going to sing it again. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I need to have the candle. Okay, name tags. Who wants to be first? Okay. I got a name tag. Okay. Um, Jay's going to be first. Jay's going to be first. Okay. These colors stand for red, blue, purple, red. So the red stands for God's blood. Mm -hmm. The white stands for the uh, sinless, mm. pure. The pure sinless. Who is pure and sinless? God. Jesus. What mm -hmm. Jesus? Mm -hmm. And the tent. The tent and uh, down on earth is is just like a copy mm -hmm. of one and heaven mm -hmm. the real tent. That's wow. right. Cool. Yeah. Amen. Cool. Excellent. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I'll put my pants. Oh dear. Okay. The white thing is just a G. The red means the blood of of God that He did with it, but Thor 
Purple robe, red, blood, white, sinless, blue. Blue. Oh, okay, um, blue. Okay. Oh. Sky. <laughs> 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 Very good. Okay, all right.